morning, everybody. It's six minutes after three here on FAN. Three o'clock, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Some may protest, others exalt. Rich Mancuso, our wrestling expert here on the fan. We're talking to Richard between now and four. Got a whole, we're going to JM's mailbag for the wrestling segment. And we'll also be taking your telephone calls. So wrestling fans, we're going into the ring after this. Here on FAN, time to issue again, Rich Mancuso. Hello, Richard. Hi, Jody. Richard, I understand you were at an independent wrestling show tonight, New Federation kicking off. Yeah, a great one. Gordon Scorsese's new American Wrestling Federation. He debuted in Asbury Park, New Jersey last night at the convention hall. Uh, I'll get into that show in a second, but I'm a little irate tonight, or early this morning, if you uh, don't mind, Jody, because... Uh, a person I thought it was a great friend uh, turns out not to be. And I'm talking about Chris Cruz, a person that who's been on our program before, who I considered a good friend. But Chris stopped me at the show and was very irate at me uh, for saying that uh, we do a lousy job here every week and that I have a, a segment here with you that misrepresents the wrestling business, that doesn't tell the truth, and that I should not be allowed to be on the air. And uh, I don't know, before I could get any reasoning from, from Chris, uh, he just walked away in disgust. The only thing I could think about is the last week or so, out of the newsletter writers and some other radio commentators in the country, uh, apparently they've been getting our uh, signal or getting some tapes from some of the fans, and they may be upset about comments that I possibly made on the segment last week responding to a question, if you recall, Jody, last week about the possible rumors that the Ultimate Warrior and some other WWF stars had tested positive for the HIV virus. And if I recall, I told everyone last week that this was strictly a rumor and there was no validity to these rumors. And if I found out anything, I would confirm them. But as far as Chris Cruz's comments, uh, they've gone by right now. I don't know what's gotten into him. But, uh, you know, I'm just a little upset about it, and I always thought he was my friend. Uh, we've had a good relationship, but I guess that's a part of the wrestling business. Sometimes they just don't keep it in the ring. Rich, I can verify the fact that anytime anybody's asked any questions about uh, either steroid use or, or testing positive for either drugs or the HIV virus, both you and I and any of the guests that we've had on, unless we've had it as complete facts, have never stated that it is so. And I don't think we've ever been wrong in saying that someone tested positive for steroids or tested positive for HIV and then found out differently. Uh, we've said, hey, well, when something gets out, rumor is rumor, and we always leave it at that. And that's a lot of what the wrestling business is all about, is rumors. And I think we're usually pretty accurate. Even when we throw out a rumor, most times it does turn out to be a fact somewhere down the line. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, but that's the way this wrestling business goes. And if that's what Cruz is mad about, then he's off base. I agree. And, uh, you know, again, if he had a gripe with me or with the program, all he had to do was just make a phone call and talk it over instead of acting the way he did. And uh, like I said, I mean, life goes on in this business. It's very competitive. I try and be as informative as if I can every week. I'm not defending myself here. I just hope Mr. Cruz is listening and understands where I'm coming from because he just didn't give me the chance in Asbury Park. But let's go on to more important business. Let's take it back into the ring. The new federation that you witnessed tonight uh, has a pretty good little stable of talent. Uh, I understand the house wasn't as big as they might have liked it to be, but it was still a very good card. Yeah, that's because Asbury Park really hasn't been a draw for wrestling over the last few years, and it's kind of a bad time of year to do wrestling with the Christmas season right upon us. But uh, i got to give Gordon Scorsese a lot of credit for what he's doing. He's built the federation with some major stars, and the matches were very good. I can't complain about any of them. And I think the few fans that were there were very impressed and uh, we're very receptive to what they may be seeing in this new AWF, and they'll be crowning a champion Monday night in Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, which will eventually be seen on television on a cable affiliate yet to be announced. But you've got stars like 
uh, Billy Jack Haynes, now in from Portland, Oregon, because the Pacific Northwest Federation with Don Owen just folded up this past week after a long rain. You have Dutch Mantel, I am Mike Sharp, guys like Paz Watley, the two Kamalas, Kamala number two and the original Kamala, Cousin Wu, Cowboy Bob Orton, Adrian Street, Sunny Beach, uh, Manny Fernandez, Paul Orndorff, Al Perez, Junkyard Dog, Dirty White Boy. So you can see that uh, it is a heavily stacked array of stars that the fans will get into. And the matches are good, and you're getting your money's worth. So, And I know Gordon's coming back into this area. He's planning to do some shows in the New York City area uh, at the Pennsylvania Hotel Course in Madison Square Garden in January. And we look to work with him and uh, help him as much as possible here on FAM because he's delivering the fans what they want. That's good wrestling and good uh, good quality individuals in their federation. Yeah, it sounds like something that could get off the ground. Rich, let's talk a little bit about the Pacific Northwest going down. I know that it has been a staple in wrestling, and a lot of great wrestlers have either gotten their start or uh, at one time had their career travel through the Pacific Northwest. Is that a bad sign for the wrestling world, the fact that the Pacific Northwest has gone under? It is, basically, because it's something to do with television. You know, wrestling is so saturated on television, and it's a big thing in Portland, Oregon. And I think next week, Billy Jack Haynes will be there uh, right here with us on FAN and fill us in more about it because he's been so involved in that area over the years. Basically, it came down to a television contract KPTV, uh, who cited declining ratings and uh, increased production costs for the cancellation of the Port the Pacific Northwest uh, wrestling promotion on their station. And when you lose TV in a major market like that, uh, there's really not much you can do. They've been just hanging in there over the last few years, but still ha uh, had a good reputation. I guess Don Owen had no other alternative to do what he did. But knowing Don Owen, from what I hear, I've never met him personally, but Billy Jack Haynes has told me very good things about Don Owen. This guy could rebound, regroup, and get some financing and get back on another station and get going again in, in Portland, which is a big wrestling town. But uh, it's never a good scene in professional wrestling when an organization closes shop. Uh, it, it may show some signs that the wrestling industry is declining, uh, I think it is a little bit, and I think this recession we're going through uh, right on top of the Christmas season right now has a lot to do with it. That was what my question was going to be, Richie. Isn't there another station out there that would be willing to take a chance on them? There are a few in that market, uh, but the big thing here is that uh, KPTV has been doing pro wrestling since 1957, uh, and, you know, that that's a, a sign that, if a station like that has been showing wrestling in that area since uh, 1957, um, you know, there may not be another station there available that can do it. Um, but I got to feel with that market and the way wrestling is that uh, Don Owen's production uh, will get back on the air. But the one thing now is he has to contend with the market there for the WWF and the WCW, which are also aired there on different stations. So, um, as my good friend Steve Beverly said this week in Matt Watch's newsletter, the bell tolls for, for, for Portland, and um, it's just a matter of, uh, I guess, getting some more financing and finding a suitable station that will take them. I know Billy Jack has been up there for a long period of time. What other uh, Pacific Northwest wrestlers are we going to see popping up maybe here in the area on an independent circuit, or maybe going with one of the two big federations, either the WCW or the WWF? Well, probably Brian Adams out of the whole crew over there. Brian Adams used to be crushing the WWF. In all probability, will make his way back here on the East Coast and get another shot in the WWF. Other than that, there really are uh, no big, big name stars. Um, but... Uh, you know, when you got a guy like Billy Jack Haynes and Brian Adams in this area, it could only help uh, pump up uh, the WWF a little more and the WCW a little more. But like I said, I think Billy Jack uh, will be more informative with us next week, and he can tell us his opinions on this because he's a legend there in Portland, Oregon, 
and uh, he knows exactly what the situation is. He was involved in a very big feud with with Crush, Billy Jack and Crush, up until last week. The final matches there in Portland. All right, Richie, let's move to the WWF with the Survivor Series now behind us and the Royal Rumble ahead. Uh, would you say the way that they've handled things in their last two pay-per-view matches have been successful, non-successful, or just going through the motions for the WWF? Well, I don't think the Survivor Series this year was very successful. The more you talk to the fans, the more you talk to the people in the industry, they weren't impressed, and i got to agree with that. The buy rate uh, did its 1.5, which gave them uh, the revenue they were looking for, and the preliminary estimates on the buy rate for Tuesday night in Texas uh, are what the WWF wanted to uh, get that quick revenue in five days after the Survivor Series to recoup from some losses that the WWF has uh, made over the last few years with uh, their World Body Feder Federation. Um, but, uh, you know, you have to question how much pay-per-view the fans want to see and how much they're going to go for it. WWF took a big risk in running pay-per-view five days uh, between two shows. And then you have WCW pay-per-view, and in fact the WCW is going to be doing more pay-per-view events in 1992. Uh, I think it, it uh, as far as the, the implications of the two shows, it was basically to set up Ric Flair against Hulk Hogan for WrestleMania, and the Royal Rumble probably in all, all likelihood end up that way. Uh, Ric Flair is in the Royal Rumble. He's one of the entrants in there, along with Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, Randy Savage, The Warlord, Davey Boy Smith, Kerry Von Erich, Virgil, The Berserker, Mr. IRS, The Big Boss Man, Jake the Snake, uh, and Roddy Roddy Piper, among some of the 30 stars entered. Uh, and the Royal Rumble will, in all likelihood, and the, the thing here is it's going to crown a new champion in the WWF, the winner of that a uh, 30-man battle uh, royal or 30-man elimination type of thing. And uh, most likely you're looking at Ric Flair, who will probably take it, to set up Hogan Flair for WrestleMania in, in April. Uh, again, I uh, don't know how much fans can take of pay-per-view, which seems to be the future of this injury, if in, uh, of this uh, industry, if not for all of professional sports. But uh, Ric Flair probably becomes champion January 19th, and Hulk Hogan most likely gets it back at WrestleMania against Flair. Richie, um, one of my favorite shows during the year for the WWF is usually the Royal Rumble, and it's never had these ramifications before where a champion would be crowned. One of the reasons why I liked it was because it wasn't really predictable. Uh, any given wrestler could come out of it with that particular win that day, uh, but you can read between the lines. You just stated it, and I think most would agree that uh, if it doesn't come down to Flair Hogan that day, certainly either Flair or Hogan is going to win the championship, and I agree with you. I think it's going to be Flair who wins the Royal Rumble. Will that detract from the show? Will the Royal Rumble be less good than it has been in years gone by because we pretty much know ahead of time what's going to happen? No, I, I think uh, that it, it may uh, help the show because here you see Hulk Hogan trying to get that belt back before WrestleMania. Now, we're all looking at Flair Hogan for WrestleMania, but then again, you know, you, you, like you just mentioned, Jody, we, we kind of anticipate what's going to happen. But I think that anticipation of what's going to happen is leading the fans to just, you know, look to see, may, hey, maybe Hogan will win the thing. He won it last year and uh, positions himself to become champion again. Though, again, that's just speculation. I no, think that Ric Flair will be will, will win this uh, Royal Rumble this year to set it up. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot more interest because of the fact that uh, people are going to want to see Savage and Roberts go at it because that's the big feud in the WWF right now, no doubt about that. And they're going to want to see The Undertaker go in it. And Sid Vicious could be returning. Uh, he's he's uh, made a recovery from his torn bicep, and he's going to be wrestling again in January and most likely will be entered in this Royal Rumble. So I think there's more anticipation now to watch this thing this year than ever before. And the people here in the area are going to get a chance to see justice before next month is out, correct? Right. At the Nassau Coliseum on January 17th, 
uh, Justice Against the Undertaker in a coffin match at the Nassau Coliseum. So Sid is back, and now we have to see what implications that will have on the Royal Rumble and for WrestleMania. Now but I think it's going to be Justice and the Undertaker down the line. You Do you think that, uh, uh, not to you think, Richie, see if my memory serves me correct, were not they pointing towards Sid Justice with a matchup against The Undertaker before he got hurt? Yes, they were. Um, but uh, now, you know, with the injury, and of course, I, uh, we all thought, and, uh, and I think that was the plan of WWF, that Justice would become the new WWF king at WrestleMania. Um, but I don't think that's going to occur because Justice's injury put him back and he's been out of action for the last few months. And number two, Hogan's plans have changed as far as Hollywood. I think he's going to be hanging around wrestling a little bit longer. So that's why I don't think uh, that, that Justice is going to be going for any championship uh, this, uh, this early in the game right now again. Uh, I think it's going to come down right now, as I said, between The Undertaker and Sid Justice down the line. Richie, a couple new guys, new faces coming into the WWF? Yeah, they've been making some moves to get some more talent in there. Uh, they, they apparently have let go of guys like the Barbarian and Jimmy Snooker, and uh, they're also looking to uh, and got rid of maybe Haku, though these guys are wrestling independent and are still on call with the WWF, but... Pretty soon you'll be seeing Kevin Von Erich join his brother Kerry and stars out of the Global Federation, including Del Wilkes and Chris Champion, who's uh, a big legend down in the Texas area. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be in pretty soon, and uh, some new talent there in the WWF. But not till after the Royal Rumble, correct? Right. Uh, it's too preliminary now. They'll, they'll probably make their impact and be on the scene after the Royal Rumble. And I think after the Royal Rumble, you're going to start seeing some interesting situations. You know, the Rockers have been having their problems, and uh, they'll officially break up um, Brutus Barber's, uh, the Beefcake's Barber Shop, either prior to or after the Royal Rumble. And then that'll be a feud that I think fans uh, don't want to see, especially fans of them. Uh, but I think that'll turn out to be a good match. Is Beefcake any closer to wrestling? You mentioned uh, he and his barber shop. I know the doctors have suggested that he probably never get back into wrestling, but uh, are his injuries healing at all so that he's getting possibly closer to returning to the ring? Yeah, his injuries have healed, but he's still under that doctor's guideline to not get back in there. I know the WWF would love to see him back in action, but... It's up to Beefcake and up to the doctors, and I think the plans at this point for Brutus are to be in the commentary position somewhere on one of the two shows, either Wrestling Challenge or Wrestling Superstars. How about the WCW, Rich? I know that it's only rumor, and we still reiterate rumor, or it was up until the last time we spoke. Is it official yet that the Warrior is in? No, it's not, though. Jim Ross has been saying on his radio show and on his 900 line, WCW, that uh, that the Ultimate Warrior will be at Starcade on uh, December 29th. Um, I would have to say yes, that the Ultimate Warrior will be at Starcade and uh, will have uh, a lot of implications on where that title is going with Lex Luger. Now, if the Ultimate Warrior does debut at Starcade or a little bit afterwards, then you look, I'm sure, for a Lex Luger Ultimate Warrior match at Wrestle War in February at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. If the Ultimate Warrior is not signed, sealed, and delivered prior to December 29th, then they'll stick still, I think, to the plan of Lex Luger against Sting, a renewal of that old feud a few, feud of a few years ago. Uh, but, um, you know, and that's a match I don't think uh, the fans really want to see again. We've seen enough of Luger against Sting. Um, I think the fans would love to see Warrior against Luger and the Warrior getting the belt. Uh, but that's all up to uh, putting the, the I's and the T's on the contract and stuff like that. And as of early this morning, he's still not officially entered in, but i got to hedge and say that he probably will be. Richie, with the added pay-per-view shows in the WCW, that's good because it says that the interest is still there and they're still doing well. But is that bad for the wrestling fan that the fact that uh, it's coming to a point where if you want to watch WCW wrestling, you almost have to go the pay-per-view route. Yeah, it, it's saturation. Not only is it taking a little bit out of the pocket, uh, I think it hurts uh, 
I heard it hurts the arena crowds, but I think it uh, it saturates on television. It's just too much, and uh, a fan can only take so much of it. You, know, you got your diehards that'll watch it and are going to order it and, and keep and keep it on, but uh, there'll be a, there'll be a lack of interest if it just keeps getting saturated like this. Uh, WCW pay-per-view event usually ranges a little less in price than a WWF event. But if you're going to be watching uh, one pay-per-view event a month or two a month, and plus all the wrestling that's on TV now on your other stations and affiliates, yeah, I think that's saturation. I think you lose fans that way. But, again, I must emphasize, pay-per-view is revenue. And that's what the WWF achieved at Tuesday night in Texas, at least a little bit of revenue. And I think that's the route where these promoters are going to go. 329 here on The Fan. Jody Mack and Rich Man Cuso talking wrestling. We're going to JM's Wrestling Mailbag next. We'll also be taking your telephone calls at 718-937-6666. So, wrestling fans, this is your chance to get your questions out there, and we'll see if we can come up with the answers for them. As we come up on 3.30, the answer man, John Stashauer, is in to clue you in on what's been going on in the world of sports over the last 24 hours. Sports Radio 66. The fan, WFAN. Good morning, I'm John Stashauer with the latest 66 WFAN Sports News. Twenty-five minutes in front of four here on the fan. Jody Mack in the midst of his wrestling segment with Rich Mancuso, but first the late scores. Rich Mancuso on the line with us. We're in the midst of our wrestling segment. Richie, got a couple of good letters to get to, so let's jump right into the old mail bag. First one comes from Peter Ferrario, I believe it's pronounced, and he wants to know a couple of good questions. A couple of weeks ago you said WWF would need someone to replace Hogan. Do you think the Macho Man could be the one? He could be. Uh, I think he did a pretty good job of when he was champion at one time in the WWF. But uh, depending on the Sid Vicious uh, situation and if they can entice Luger somehow, uh, Macho Man may be settled for the Intercontinental belt. But it's always a possibility that he could become champ again. Our buddy Jimmy Mills from Martinville, Virginia, wants to know, are Blackjack Mulligan and his son... Kendall Wyndham still doing time in Florida for their counterfeiting conviction. Yeah, yes, they are, and and I think uh, the jail term for both of them, for father and son, is just about terminated. Somewhere in 1992, they should be out. Matthew from Hempstead wants to know if Luga joins the WWF after his contract runs out. Who do you think will become? Ooh, I don't even know if I understand this question. Who do you think will take, I guess the question he's trying to ask is, who will take over his duties as the strong man in the WCW? Well, Lex Luger. Yeah. Uh, there's always Sting who will be around, and, uh, you know, Ricky Steamboat is in there, and Rick Rude is in there now, and then, hey, if the Ultimate Warrior is there, that's the guy. True. Um, but you say Luger now might be staying in the WCW? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he re-signed the contract, so he's there for at least another year. Does the WCW plan on bringing in any more women? No, no, they don't. They're going just with Medusa Michelli at the moment. They let Lady Blossom go, and uh, it looks like it's just going to be Medusa. Except the Lethal Lottery, are there any other matches signed for Starcade? No, there are not. It looks like uh, this show is just going to be the Lethal Robbery, Lottery, which... Uh, Maybe it is going to be a robbery, depending on how well the show goes. But it, it's a long ordeal. Forty stars draw lotteries. They divide into 20 tag teams, 10 matches, and the winners advance to a two-ring battle royal where one man could survive. All the stars in WCW are in it, and that could be a long ordeal. From Steve Cohen in Fairview, New Jersey, heard that there was something involving Ric Flair and nasty boy Brian Nobbs after the MSG show on November 30th. Do you know what happened? Yeah, there was an altercation at the bar in the China Club. Ric Flair and uh, uh, the nasty boys, uh, it got a little hairy there. And um, 
you know, it, uh, it had to get uh, broke up. And, it, you know, like Vince McMahon saw it, too, and Hulk Hogan supposedly were there and saw the whole thing, and I don't think that'll happen again. From Doris and Mike, why is the WWF still distorting Ric Flair's belt on TV at the Survivor Series? Flair was wearing the NCW belt with the WWF emblem on it. Well, it's because Jack Tunney made that stipulation that uh, Ric Flair is not the champion, and as long as he's going to parade around uh, the WWF with a belt, they will distort it from television. Now, the lawsuit with WCW supposedly has been settled. That original belt has gone back to them, and uh, they made some type of an agreement, but basically, Tunney's decision, that's why they are distorting the belt. From our pals, the Pro Boys, Tom and Tony, why did Owen Hart make a full-time commitment to the WWF when he's turned it down in the past and does so well in Japan? Well, it's an opportunity to return, to be with his brother, Brett. Uh, they've given him a good opportunity teaming up with Jim the Anvil of the New Hart Foundation. And uh, I think he'll do well this time because when he was the Blue Blazer, as everyone knew, that just didn't work out. Would the WCW consider making Ricky Steamboat heavyweight champion after Luger? Uh, that's an outside possibility, but I got to think that they would eye Steamboat more towards the U.S. title. A couple of questions from Michael from Mil Middle Village. Why did Hercules replace Billy Busick at the Survivor Series? Well, Billy uh, left the promotion and went back to Joe Pedicino's Global Wrestling Federation, and they had to put a replacement in there right away. Is Johnny B. Bad turning good? Yes, he is. Will Missy Hyatt be the manager of Marcus Bagwell? No, uh, they're just uh, playing a game there. M uh, Missy is going to be uh, just doing her TV responsibilities, answering mail and things like that. And uh, no, I don't, she's going to have any intentions of managing anybody. Are the wrestlers in the WCW upset over the nepotism displayed by Dusty Rhodes for giving his son Dustin two championship belts? I haven't heard anything, and um, in fact, I think Dustin has gained a lot of respect over the last few months because his wrestling has improved tremendously. Do you think that it's time for the WWF to get Tito Santana a tag team partner, someone maybe like Conan, and call them the Matadors? That was a plan that I had heard of, and I don't know what's delaying Conan's arrival into the WWF except for commitments in Mexico. Uh, in the meantime, Santana will go the solo route and uh, may have some opportunities against uh, Repo Man. How long will Ric Flair wrestle in the WWF, and will he ever return to the WCW if Jim Hurd is replaced? Uh, that's always an outside chance in wrestling. You never know about a return there to WCW for Flair. But in the meantime, I think he's uh, settled on staying where he is and get this series over with Hogan, and, um, you know, he'll achieve success uh, to get in getting the title. And uh, then probably move in, and once he decides he's had enough, yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll have a job in the front office, and I think he'd be very good at it. From Mitzi in Brooklyn, is this rumor true? Buddy Rogers at age 71 is making a comeback? Yeah, he's going to be doing at least one match uh, for Joe Pedicino's Tri-State Wrestling, not Joe Pedicino, Joe Goodhart, Tri-State Wrestling Alliance in Philadelphia. And... Uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting thing to see him back in the ring. From Joe Puccio, was the snake bite real when Macho Man got bit by the cobra? Well, you saw it, Jody, didn't you? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, no. No, it was. It, he really, the snake really bit, really bit uh, Randy. No. Yes, it was. It was a real snake bite. No. Okay. Why doesn't Power and Glory in the Orient Express team anymore, and weren't the Orient Express supposed to turn good? Well, Power and Glory is just about history, and as far as the Orient Express, they've been the history. In fact, Pat Tanaka is wrestling uh, on the independent uh, shows around the country. From Glenn Rossi, do you see Macho Man eventually getting the Intercontinental belt back? That's a possibility. I don't see it happening right now. Uh, is this feud with Jake Roberts will go up until WrestleMania, and then he'll take it from there. Will Lady Blossom or Missy Hyatt be jumping to the WWF? That comes from our pal Rich the Bulldog fan. No, I don't see that. All right, Frank Russo. Can you please tell me why the Rockers broke up the dissension between them outside the ring? All right, they weren't good friends, but they weren't good friends in their AWA days either, and they stayed together. Why are they breaking up now? 
Well, I think it's a matter of uh, starting up a new feud in the WWF, and yeah, it's an unpopular decision. I don't think the, the fans don't like this too much, but it's a natural feud for the WWF. All right, from our pals Bago Cheese, why is the decision reversed on Ric Flair in Madison Square Garden for using brass knuckles, but yet Hogan can win by cheating? with throwing ashes in the face of The Undertaker. Yeah, well, uh, Jack Tunney reversed that decision and uh, made this belt vacant. But uh, that's something that's ruining Ric Flair, exactly what we saw at the Garden on the 30th. Cam Malone from Queens wants to know, now that Randy Savage has been reinstated, will he continue to host superstars of wrestling with McMahon and Piper? No, well, we've already seen uh, Piper and Savage replaced by, by uh, Mr. Perfect. And I think uh, the plans for Piper and Savage are they'll just make occasional appearances there with McMahon. Is Medusa Michelli married? No, she's not. That's always good news. Uh, second letter from Bago Cheese. Heard from reliable sources that Ted DiBiase will change his ways at the Royal Rumble and feud with Ric Flair. Is this possible? That's possible, and it's also possible that... IRS could change his ways and feud with DiBiase and call for an audit on him. But it's going to be a natural, and it would be a good match to have DiBiase against Flair. Eric, the Midnight Rider, wants to know, why is the WCW constantly hiding Brad Armstrong? First is Bad Street, now Arachnaman. I really don't know. Uh, this is a talented wrestler, and I really don't know why they're doing that. Do you see Raymond Rougeau returning to the WWF to reform the Mounties? No, I don't, but he's pretty content up in Canada. Okay. Uh, how could, uh, this one comes from David Lenhoff, how could Hulk Hogan get a rematch so quickly against The Undertaker when Bob Backlund never got a rematch against the Iron Sheik? Well, it basically came down to pay-per-view. That time, pay-per-view wasn't as big as it is today. And that'll do it for the mailbag for the week. A couple of good questions. Now we'll see if we get some good questions on the phone at 718 937 6666. Wrestling fans, start your dialing. Hey, Net fans, follow your team all year round here on The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. to compete with them now. No? No. no. Um, I was just also wondering if, uh, if you knew of any uh, promotion coming up this way with the WCW because I haven't been here for over a year in this area and I was just wondering if we had a promoter still or... Well, I've heard that you're going to be getting something up there towards February. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I have a regular uh, uh, listener up there who writes to me every so often and tells me that there, uh, there are plans for a WCW event there in February. Oh, wow, that's great. And also, do you know if uh, Stan Hansen will be returning soon? You never know with him. Right now he's in Japan, mm -hmm. and you never know with him. Uh, the problem with him in the WCW is that commitment in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Lanny, thanks for the call. All right, thanks. Have a good Come night. On. Dave from the Bronx, you're on FAN. How you doing, guys? How you doing? Um, I want to know, is the Skinner Steve Kern? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, it is. He's from Florida, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I don't understand why is Hulk Hogan so popular. I've been following wrestling for a while. Now, but I used to watch it more when Bob Backlund was champion. I thought he was an awesome champion because uh -huh. he has like all these different holes to win the match. Yeah, and Hogan has like basically the same hole with right. leg drop, and I think it's boring. Yeah, I know that's the knock on him, but uh, Bob Backlund is not a Hulk Hogan as far as uh, a drawer, and that's what it comes down to. Hogan has caught America's eye over the last few years. Has the Garden been selling out lately? No, and it's not just the Garden, it's everywhere. I think, again, as I mentioned earlier, wrestling's been hit hard by this recession. And uh, the Garden has been a mainstay for the WWF for years, but it's not just the Garden, it's the whole country that's suffering. Dave, um, thanks for the call. Vinny from Manhattan's on the fan. Hi, Vin. How you doing, guys? How you doing? Uh, after Flair wins the Rumble, and then Hogan wins the uh, at WrestleMania, uh -huh. do you think that they'll recognize both belts and have another champion? No, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I think uh, 
you know, flair will fade away. Uh, and, you know, just, uh, they, they, they'll just go with the one belt. The whole idea behind this, again, was to pump up the drawer, Hogan Flair, and uh, Flair saying he's the real champion. So I don't think, and I don't think it's worked, and I don't think it's been successful, and, and I don't think they're going to they're gonna want to continue to go with it. I saw the last two cards of the Garden, and I think they're making Flair look like a buffoon. Yeah, I think the general wrestling community feels that way. And it's a shame because Ric Flair has been such a talent over the years. But this was his uh, his thing he wanted to do. He wanted to go WWF before the end of his career. It's his last major fling. Um, yeah, he's been ruined a little bit, but he's still Ric Flair. Vinny, thanks for the insights. Greg from Manhattan joins us here on FAN. Hi, Greg. Enjoy it, Rich. How you doing? How you okay. Doing? All right, Rich, i got to ask you a question. I heard a rumor that um, you might be having a television show coming up soon. Yes, no, it's not a rumor. It's a fact. Uh -huh. that me and John Arezzi, uh -huh. who uh, does another radio show here in the New York area, uh, will be teaming up and doing a wrestling call-in type of TV show mm -hmm. starting January 4th from 3 to 4 p.m. every Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will be available on the UHF stations, channel 44 and 38, now, I don't know where you're calling from. I'm in Manhattan. I get Manhattan Cable. Well, I, I think you can get it, because yeah. 5 million people can get the two stations in the New York area. So uh -huh. what's, the, what's the name of the station? Gonna be call, uh, it's uh, WQX. So I don't have the call letters okay. in front of me. Channel 8, uh, 38 or 44. Mm -hmm. It'll be called Pro Wrestling Today. Great. And um, I want to know, um, what's the policy now? I know that the WCW basically with this aid situation is uh, put a, base, a ban on um, blood in the arenas now. Yeah. Um, and I, what's the WWF situation there? Because I know on the angle they just shot with, uh, with Michaels turning on Gennetti, Gennetti juiced on the TV show. Yeah. Um, I mean, are they, are they going to be instituting something like that or not? Well, I haven't heard uh, what the WWF is going to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure they're being extra careful with this right now. Yeah, okay, okay guys, keep it in the ring. Thanks, Greg. Mike from Queens joins us here on FAN. Hi, Michael. Yes, I want to ask you something. I heard that you were talking about Ted DiBiase turning clean. Now, somebody told me that, that they were going to have a few with um, Sensational Sherry. Is that true? That who's what? Sensational Sherry. What, that she would turn? Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard anything. I don't know who told you that, but I haven't heard anything to that uh, magnitude. Um, one other question I'd like to ask you. Whatever happened to Nikolai Volkov? Well, Nikolai has been wrestling independent. Yeah. And um, when I last spoke to him just a few weeks ago, he said that he'd be back in the WWF sometime in 1992. Good, because I hope so. Um, I don't mean to bother. Can I ask you one more question? Last one, Mike. Um, what about, why did Ricky the Dragon Steamboat go back to WCW? Well, uh, in the proper place at the right time. I mean, he had an opportunity to go back and get a good offer with a limited amount of dates and a good contract. And so he jumped on it, and uh, he's back. And I think it was a good move by them. Mike, thanks for the call. Thanks a lot. James from Ridgewood joins us here on the fan. Hi, James. Hi, Joey. Hi, Rich. Yes, James. I got two quick questions. Um, now, about the Rocket situation, who's going to turn bad? Uh, Shawn Michaels. Will he have a manager? Uh, speculation at this point that it could be Harvey Whippleman. Okay, and um, what do you think was the best feud of, in all-time all wrestling? Oh, well, that's a tough one. Um, I, I don't know. I, you know, that, that is such a tough question off the top of my head. You don't think Piper and Snooker or something like that? No. No, that, that's one of the good ones. <laughs> I, I've always been, again, a Bruno San Martino fan, and almost every match he's had over the years was a good feud. Him and Kill Kowalski had some great matches. Mm -hmm. uh, him and Grill Monsoon had matches, and Bruno and uh, Cowboy Bill Watts had some great matches. So, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, recent, recently, uh, Savage uh, Steamboat had some great matches. Yeah, right. Flair Steamboat. I mean, it can go on and on. Okay, thank you very much. I think Flair Steamboat might be your choice. Brett from Jericho, you're on Sports Radio 66 with Rich Mancuso. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Okay. Two quick ones. Uh, first quick one is, how come Jimmy Snooker has been reduced to a prelim wrestler with the WWF before they released him? I think age had a lot to do with it, and I also think that there's just no room for him in the promotion right now. 
because he seemed to get down and back into good shape, and yeah. they still didn't do anything with him. And then secondly, uh, when I originally had brought up that the Ultimate Warrior situation, you had said that uh, Hercules Hernandez and Kirk Henning also were rumored to have the HIV virus. Is that any reason why Hercules Hernandez has disappeared from the area, and also Kirk Henning has gone to the announcing group? No. Again, this is just a rumor that, uh, that, uh, that I said was a rumor. Well, when I originally brought up the Ultimate Warrior, which is what I've heard from other wrestlers, I never knew about the other people, and you brought the other two wrestlers up. Yeah, because it's a rumor, again. And uh, the more and more I look at it, I think it's all rumor. Uh, well, let's the, cl- let's the clear Ultimate the air Warrior. on this right now. I think if that it was was uh, uh, something that was uh, positive to WWF, I, I'm pretty sure would have released a statement because of the Magic Johnson situation. But why destroy the guy, you know? Did I, you saying that I did? No, why would they do that? No. Well, with the, the case with Kurt Henning is a bad back. That, that's, that's official. The case with Hercules, I think it's just a matter of them not having room for him at this point and him to do whatever he wants to do. But, oh, but these worry. rumors, I don't know where they're coming from. And they're just strictly rumors because uh, I haven't been able to confirm it. And, uh, and they're just rumors. Brett, thanks for the call. TJ from Bridgeport, you're on FAN. Uh, how are you guys doing? Hi, TJ. All right. I got three quick questions. First one, uh, do any of you know the um, pairings for the um, Starcade? Uh, no, I don't. Well, second one is... Um, they say it's, it isn't going to be a draw, so... Well, yeah, it, it, what it basically is, the good guys could be wrestling together, the bad guys could... You know, bad guys and good guys could be on the same team. This is what makes it. It's all a lottery at the beginning, and then you take it from there. All right. Second question. Um, why, I mean, the wrestlers should know. They're supposed to be bitter enemies like Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan. You see them wrestle. Why do they talk to each other? And what do they say? Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan talking to each other? Yeah, and other wrestlers, you know, when, they, when they're like, like a war or something, they're into the match, you know, a good guy gets the first five minutes and to each other, you know. Then they start saying some to each other, and, you know, they start suplexing after that. Well, uh, do you know that that officially happened? I'll tell you what. Billy Jack Keynes is there next week. You ask him that, and he'll answer it better than I can. TJ, thanks for the call. Last call of the night, Chuck from Jersey. Hey, Rich, how you doing? This is Chuck. Uh, you work for me. I would like to uh, not say any more than that about the organization. Uh, oh, you, UWA. How you doing, uh, Chuck? Hi. <laughs> um, I have a comment about the uh, Chris Cruz comment you made. Right. Uh, I was at the show tonight. I didn't see you. I was uh, in the locker room. Right. And uh, I don't know what's going on with Chris, but uh, tonight there was a couple of mentally handicapped, retarded kids in the back getting some autographs, and he says, hey, buddy, let's go. Let's get the blank out of here. Mm. So I don't know. I don't think it's you, 